to talk to you about what my father and my mother inculcated into me is a love of God and country. Because as we want to discuss today, I believe that American patriotism is sincerely rooted in Christian patriotism. And I want to thank you all for playing Fanfare for the Common Man. That was one of my favorite songs by Aaron Copeland because that's what America is all about. That's what our Christian faith is all about. Common everyday men and women that have done extraordinary things for our Christian faith and also for these great United States of America. Now, if you have your Bibles, I will ask that you will turn to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 5. But I want to start off first in reading you this quote. To the distinguished character of patriot, it should be our highest glory to add the more distinguished character of Christian. That quote is attributed to George Washington, general of our army, first president of the United States of America. But in Joshua chapter 1, 5 through 9, And Joshua is one of my favorite, he's probably my favorite guy. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. If you understand what had happened, Moses had passed away, and God had decided that Joshua would be the new leader. It was a change of command. And so God, as his supreme commander, had given him these orders. And if you see in this passage, he told him three separate times to be strong and courageous. And so what did Joshua do? Joshua took the command from God, and he went forward and talked to the people. And this is what the people said when they answered Joshua in verse 18. All that you have commanded us, we will do, and wherever you send us, we will go. Anyone who rebels against your command and does not obey your words in all that you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. See, the challenge we have today as Christians as Americans, is that if we are sincere about passing on faith and freedom to subsequent generations, we have to remember the command that God gave Joshua here to be strong and courageous. See, my fear is that too many Christians are cowering away from the fight. Too many Christians don't want to be engaged. Too many Christians are allowing other people to define who we should be. And when that happens, you don't have success. You don't have prosperity because as God commanded Joshua, God is also commanding you to be strong and courageous. And when you read down here and it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous. See, it's not just this book that we should be writing through and making notes in. There's another book that we should carry on us at all times and we should be writing in and taking notes. That's the Declaration. It's the Constitution. Because our patriotism, what established this document, this simple little document here, is rooted in this book here. And if you don't understand these two, just the same as I told my chaplain when we went over to Iraq, this is your personal weapon. And if I ever catch you without your personal weapon, I'm going to drop you for (laughs) push-ups. Because there's power in this personal weapon. But there's also power in this personal weapon. Now, I will tell you that I'm sure there are folks that are going to be out there, and there's folks going to see this, and they're going to say, ah, heresy. 
Doesn't Colonel West know about the separation of church and state? How dare he stand up here, a former member of Congress, and hold the Bible and hold the Declaration and the Constitution? But see, if you understand that American patriotism is rooted in Christian patriotism, you will go to them and say, show me. Show me where it says anything about separation of church and state. Is it in the Declaration of Independence? Is it in the Federalist Papers? Is it in the United States Constitution? No. Separation of church and state was written in a letter by Thomas Jefferson to the Danbury Baptist Convention. And all it said was that here in these United States of America, we will not have an establishment of a religion, but we will also not have a head of state who is the head of church as they had in England. But see, when you don't understand that your American patriotism is rooted in your Christian patriotism, then people will come along and say, you can't have prayer in schools. See, I remember when we used to play football down in old Grady Stadium. Before every football game, a local minister would pray. We didn't have catastrophic illnesses, and we didn't have some of these terrible injuries that we see today because they pray over those teams. And if something as different has happened, think about what is happening in our schools today. I don't remember us having to have metal detectors for people bringing guns into school. But when you, we have all of a sudden believed that separation of church and state means that we separate ourselves from our Judeo-Christian faith heritage, our fundamental principles and values, then as Joshua was commanded here, you lose your success. You lose your prosperity. Do not let people separate your faith heritage from your nation and from who you are as a Christian because that is what is happening. So when someone comes up and challenges you with separation of church and state, you got to come back and say, show me. And they cannot. But if we don't understand who we are, then we get led astray and we don't have the success and prosperity. And furthermore, when you understand that this document, that we're going to celebrate this week, 238 years, the Declaration of Independence.